Starlink Report. This is the Starlink Report for February 22nd, 2021. I'm Huey Poplock. The Starlink Report. An email went out from Starlink this past month. The Starlink is now available for order to a limited number of users in your coverage area. Placing your order now will hold your place in line for future service. Orders will be fulfilled on a first come first served basis. During beta, users can expect to see data speeds vary from 50 megabits per second to 150 megabits per second and latency from 20 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds in most locations over the next several months as we enhance the Starlink system. There will also be brief periods of no connectivity at all. Here is the boxes that you receive and inside them uh, is the router as we launch more satellites, install more ground stations, and improve our networking software, data speed, latency, and uptime will improve dramatically. The Starlink team will provide periodic updates on availability as we launch more satellites and expand our coverage area. Depending on your location, some orders may take six months or more to fulfill. To check availability for your location, visit Starlink.com and re-enter your service address. Thank you for your interest in Starlink and your continued support. Here's what the roof mount looks like. Starlink's hardware includes a small satellite receiver dish for installation by customers at their service address. The service itself costs $99 per month while the equipment is $499, a one-time fee. This does seem steep, but SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said on Twitter recently that the plan is to have the costs come down over time once the significant initial investment is recouped. For now, however, coverage is limited, though SpaceX recently expanded its closed beta to an open one, with anyone able to sign up via Starlink website after an address check and place an order, including a deposit with the full amount for the hardware kit to be charged once it ships. On February 12th, CEO Elon Musk says SpaceX is churning out Starlink satellites faster than it can launch them. The best sign yet that the company is having some amazing success in what is already the most productive satellite factory in history. On February 16th, SpaceX launched yet another batch of Starlink satellites, a full complement of 60, the standard size for its current Falcon 9 based Starlink missions. This brings SpaceX's total to just around 1,000 in active in orbit taking into account the handful that were experimental or have been deorbited to date. Starlink is a global satellite-based data network powered by small, low-Earth orbit satellites. Historically, broadband satellites have been large, expensive spacecraft positioned much further out from Earth in a fixed orbit, providing service in a single coverage area. Because of their distance from Earth and the way they connect to base stations, coverage has been very high latency and relatively inconsistent, which you'll recognize if you've ever tried to use Wi-Fi on an air flight, for instance. SpaceX's constellation-based approach, uh, the satellites position much closer to Earth, which improves latency and also has the satellites orbiting Earth and handing off connections between one another, which in theory provides more consistent coverage, particularly as the size of the constellation grows. Eventually, SpaceX intends to provide coverage globally from Starlink with an emphasis on offering service to areas where coverage has been weak due to ground infrastructure challenges in the past. 
SpaceX lost its Falcon 9 rocket on landing in the first of two Starlink missions on February 15th. The booster appeared to miss the landing pad of the company's drone ship in the Atlantic that Monday night. It crashed into the ocean. In the process, it appears to have spared three seagulls that were hanging out on the landing pad and may never understand how close they came to being barbecued. The Falcon 9 itself had a decent life, completing six launches successfully, but only five landings in its career. The apparent hard water landing comes almost exactly a year after the same thing happened at the end of an earlier Starlink mission on February 17, 2020. Every landing attempt in between has been successful, for Falcon 9 that is, definitely not counting the Starship testing in Texas. SpaceX had planned to launch two batches of Starlinks from Florida within hours of each other earlier this month, but the second one of those missions was postponed. These launches and drone ship landings that follow them are becoming pretty routine for SpaceX, despite this mishap. But Musk would like to see the pace of launches increase. The permit from the FCC for Starlink to operate requires that at least 2,212 of its satellites be operational by March of next year. There are some scheduled Starlink liftoffs on the February 25th, March 8th, and then later in March. 60 satellites on each one. And this has been the Starlink Report. And I'm Huey Poplock. Thank you.